Well, how you doing out there? Um, it's 1146. Not that anybody's watching their watches or wondering. I don't know what you were doing this time last night, but I'm guessing it wasn't sitting in a church. You probably were uh, getting ready for bed or in bed or well in bed. But I'm delighted to be here tonight. I'm, this is my favorite night of the year, and this is my service, my favorite service of my favorite night of the year. I am so thrilled to be here and so glad that you have indulged me by coming to the 11 o'clock service. And I want to begin tonight by asking you a few questions, because it is Christmas Eve, and now I think we can finally say the stores are closed. And what's done is done, and what isn't done isn't done. How many of you have wrapping still to do? Yeah? Some of you? Yeah? Yeah. I don't. All my wrapping's done. This is the first time in five years that all of my wrapping has been done. So I want you to sit back and I want you to relax. I want you to, I want you to just sit back and relax. I want you to take a deep cleansing breath. You know, you go to one of those stress relief seminars and they tell you how to take these breaths that really help to relieve the stress. And so you breathe in deeply and then you hold it and then you breathe out slowly. So let's do that. Breathe in deeply. And hold it a minute and then just gently breathe out. And see, all that stress is just flying away, all the worries that you have. And now let's think about Christmas. First question, what would you say is the best thing about Christmas? Is it the food? All the cookies that we make that are only made for Christmas, right? Cookies that are good, cookies that take so long to make like seven-layer bars and thumbprints and and Hershey cookies kiss cookies and decorated cutout cookies. It's almost a sin to eat them in one bite, but you go ahead and do anyway. Or is it all the decorating that it goes on inside and outside of your home? You decorate the tree, you decorate the mantle, you decorate the end tables, you decorate the dining room table, you decorate the outside, the house, the bushes, and everything looks awesome. How about when you drive through a plan? Do you live in a plan or you drive through a plan to visit and it's one of those plans where everybody's trying to outdo each other? But it looks awesome because everybody's houses are lit up and they're calling attention to the fact that it's Christmas. Or could it be this, the fact that this, you have very special time at this time of year? You have time away from work. And you have time with family and friends especially if they're scattered and you don't get to see them nearly enough. You have time to slow down and enjoy the season. At least tonight, you can slow down, though you may not think that you slow down much at all. So, so let's enjoy the night. Let's relax and get into Christmas. Best thing about Christmas, maybe it's the presents. When you were a child, it was all about the presents, wasn't it? We made Christmas lists because we wanted whoever was responsible for getting the presents to get it right, right? My Christmas list included the page numbers where the item could be found in the J.C. Penney toy catalog. Remember catalogs? Someone please tell me that you do. And then there's Jesus, of course. Jesus is the reason that we give presents anyway. Jesus is God's gift to us. The wise men brought presents to Jesus, gold and frankincense and myrrh, presents befitting a king, demonstrating his royalty. Is Jesus the best thing about Christmas? I think we're supposed to say yes, even if we're not sure. Second question, what's the best present you ever received? At Christmas, the best present you ever received at Christmas. That could be a hard one. If you received a diamond and got engaged, then it's easy. If you had a new car in your driveway when you went out on Christmas morning and it had a great big bow on it, then that certainly for you was a December to remember, right? I'll bet my boys, I'll bet my boys would say that their favorite Christmas was the year that we got our golden retriever. They were little. Yeah, it was awesome. They were little, and and at 9 a.m. on Christmas morning, we were already up and opening presents. The doorbell 
rang at the front of our home. And I, we sent, Tony and I sent the boys, go answer the door, go answer the door. And they opened the door, and there were Merle and Janet Douth, the two of our friends, and they were holding this golden retriever puppy. You know, like the ones you see in the L.L. Bean catalogs? I mean, they're just so precious that you wish you could go out and buy more of them. Yeah, and he had a red ribbon around his neck. And we named him Truman. And he was the best dog ever. I think I need a minute. Okay. Now, did anybody think to themselves that maybe Jesus is the best present of all time that we received at Christmas? Jesus, that's a good answer. Some of you were not thinking of that one, though, were you? But that's okay. Okay, so then I have a third question. Since we are in church together to celebrate the birth of Jesus, what would you say is the best thing about Jesus, the best part of this Jesus gift that we received at Christmas? I'll give you some choices. There is no wrong answer here, and then I'll tell you what I think. Best thing about Jesus. Could it be forgiveness? Let's talk about forgiveness, because Jesus provides forgiveness for sin. Sin is when we disobey God. We disobey God when we are unkind to others, when we are inconsiderate of others, and when we are insensitive to the needs of others. We sin when we don't follow God's laws that were intended to honor God and honor one another. Laws that enable us to live in peace and harmony with each other. Nobody's perfect, really. So when we ask Jesus to forgive our sins, he forgives our sin. But Jesus gave his life up to do so. That's a pretty big deal. Now, now here's one of the biggest mistakes, probably one of the greatest misunderstandings that Christians have about their faith. So listen carefully. Many of us believe that our salvation, that getting to heaven is based on how good we are, how well we obey God. That's not so. That's not so. Our salvation and our eternal life is based on believing in Jesus believing that Jesus is who he says he is. We can't earn eternal life. It's not based on what we do. It is based on what God has already done, and that is that God has taken on human form. He has come to earth as Jesus. He has lived a perfect life. He has taken his sins upon us, sins for all time. He has suffered and died on the cross to pay for those sins. He has been raised from death to life to overcome those sins. You see, it's not based on what we do. You should tell yourself that. It's not based on what we do. It's based on who we believe in. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. It's that simple. So forgiveness, the ability to be forgiven when we make a mistake, the ability to start over again, it's a pretty good gift, don't you think? Maybe the best thing about Jesus is that he offers us hope and a future. Hope is another gift that we receive at Christmas. Hope is believing and trusting that things will get better. Hope enables us to look upon the bright side, to look beyond the difficulties and limitations of our current situation and our current world. Hope leads us to anticipate better days. Hope gives us confidence in the future. You know, research has proven that people who have hope in their lives live better lives, that they are more pleasant to be around, and that they are more encouraging of others. They recover faster from setbacks. When they face illnesses and surgeries, they get better quicker. We have hope. We receive hope at Christmas because Jesus is born. We gain hope because we know that Jesus cares for us and loves us. We have hope because we can tap into the supernatural power of God through prayer. 
whether we are troubled or, or, or whether we have a need. So is hope your best gift? Or is it eternal life? Because that's another gift we get through Jesus. We don't think about eternal life very much because our lives are, are so full of everyday living. But if you get really sick or if you lose a friend or a family member, then you begin to wonder. Then you begin to wonder if there is something more, if there is something after. And there is. It's called eternal life. It's called life after death. And then we live with, we spend eternity with Jesus. It may not mean much to us now, but it will someday. I promise. Because we believe we have this promise of eternal life. Now, we could consider the joy of Christmas. We could talk about the peace of Christmas. They're also very special gifts. So which one is it for you? For me, the best one just might be the present of presence. The presence of God in my life, the presence of Jesus being with me, doing life with me. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph to explain that his fiancée Mary would give birth to Jesus, Joseph was stunned, and so the angel encouraged Joseph to take Mary home as his wife. It was okay. And then he said, you're to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save people from their sins, he told Joseph. And then the scripture continues. It says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, and she will give birth to a son, and they will call him what? Emmanuel. Which means what? God with us. And we could debate for a long time which gift from Jesus is best. But I love the notion that God is active in the world and that Jesus is doing life with me. That assures me that I am never alone. Never. I like having help when I'm facing a struggle or trying to solve a problem. I like knowing that when I face a seemingly insurmountable obstacle that I don't need to overcome it all by myself. I like knowing that when everyone seems to be against me that I'm not alone. I like having access to the power of God and the wisdom of God through Christ. I like knowing that even when I'm alone, I'm never alone. I've never liked to face things alone. You know, when I was six or seven years of age, I had to have my tonsils removed. I stayed in the hospital the night before, and my mother stayed with me. I was not alone. The next morning, they came to take me to surgery. Say goodbye to your mother, they said. Wait, what? She's going with me, right? No, she can't. And off we went and my eyes were filled with tears. But then as they wheeled me down the hall, my dad came walking the other way, and I latched onto his arm for dear life because I thought, surely he's the one who's going to accompany, to me, accompany me to surgery. But it wasn't so. I was very sad. I think we do life better when we do not have to do life alone. God is with us. We might overlook the significance of this. We could take this for granted. But such a concept was not lost on the people of Jesus' day. They were familiar with the authority of God. He issued laws to be obeyed. He was powerful and majestic and holy. And to many of them, God was so holy that they would not even pronounce his formal name. He was seemingly unapproachable. 
seemingly watching over them, but not necessarily doing life with them, not necessarily walking by their side every day. It wasn't personal for them. And then Jesus, God's Son, came and lived in the world, and He took on human form as a baby, and then a boy, and then a man. And He experienced things that humans experience, things like hunger and thirst and fear and anger and temptation and sorrow. He went through what we go through so that he would know what we go through. He never sinned, and then he died and was raised from death to life and lives among us and in us in the form of his Holy Spirit. He's always there. Little girl was having a conversation with her Sunday school teacher as the teacher was trying to emphasize to them the significance of God being in their lives. And the little girl said to her Sunday school teacher, I know, I know that Jesus is in my heart because when I put my hand on my heart, I can feel him walking around in there. On this night over 2,000 years ago, he came to earth for us. Jesus came to meet our needs. He came to forgive our sins. He came to offer us hope and a future. He came to give us eternal life. Jesus came to help us overcome our fears and our uncertainties. He came to hear and answer our prayers. He came to provide a better life for us. He came to be with us. On this night many years ago, God sent his son Jesus to be with us. And he has been with us ever since. You are not alone. Even if you live alone, even if you feel like you are all alone, you are not alone. God is with you. God is with us. We are not alone. Put your hand over your heart, and you will feel him walking around in there. We do not face the issues of life all by ourselves. He laughs with us and he cries with us. He celebrates with us and he grieves with us. Jesus, God's Son, lives life with us and our lives are better because of it and we rejoice in that fact on this night. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. I like it. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for this night, this opportunity to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior and your Son, Jesus Christ, our lives are so much richer, so much fuller, because you have come into the world and you are doing life with us. And so I pray that each one of us this night would hear perhaps for the first time or would be reminded because we've heard it before that you are always with us, that you never leave us or forsake us, that you have come so that we may have life In all its fullness, we are never alone. In your name we pray. Amen.